Godzilla put the beat on. All right, going next. Going to be quick. Here we go. We got caller from 347 area code. Caller from 347. You're live on the air. What's going on? Yeah, 2 pjt What's going on? Good, 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 man. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I wanted to um, definitely give you a shout out, man, um, on that Billy Carson thing. Because, uh, you know, I'm just like uh, Triple C and um, Shocker that just called in. I, mm-hmm. I was a follower of York for like 1995 to 2010. Wow. And uh, me and uh, Polite used to go back at it way back in 99 on um, MySpace. <laughs> and he used to go by a uh, uh, poor and light it was another no light and water my bad i'm sorry uh, and it was another another thing and um years later like i thought got broke away from new york situation and started finding out about the plagiarisms and stuff like that and i ran into chuck and them to about maybe about 2014 and then i started becoming more acclimated mm-hmm. with the case and and uh, and start talking to some of the victims we did a lot of debates um, myself, uh, on Triple C's, um, six, Amadi Six Dynasty, we had a lot of debates over the years. I even got a Facebook group mm-hmm. that we was debating them for like 2014, 2021 about York and, and the herpes and, and the teachings and stuff like that. But what I wanted to add in is that mm-hmm. the reason, one of the, some of the main top reasons that these people, um, can get away with it for so long is because a lot of us are misusing forgiveness and mm-hmm. uh, religion played a part in that and then when you add in the, the street codes and the black power um, situation and our black leaders getting taken down by the alphabet boards and all of that and then right. you have that no smithing see all that's mixed into the pot and because of that that these codes is what protects the predator. Same way you you got predators in your family, people don't go after them. I, mean, I remember Polite had said something when this before this came out with the scamming, mm-hmm. and when people was going in and trying to get him caught up, he was like, "How y'all overlook the drug dealer in your neighborhood and, and come out to me like?" He, he was deflected, but making up also he made a good point, mm-hmm. and he said, "Y'all would like to pick and choose who y'all want to go after, and it's easier to get on the computer." and go at him than to go after the, the, the person that's in your neighborhood. Like, so it's all of that. And so we can place the blame in, in, in multifaceted areas, but to, to but in the reality, and I said this um, before on another platform, is that all of those people that you see that was on the house of consciousness, all of these cats were doing their own version of um, hustling in one form or another and that and what Polite did he just mimicked everybody that was doing it before him and you know so, you know Sarnetta is is just a I call him the Frankenstein maker because those he creates monsters and he released them out into the digital universe and then he protects them and I wanted to also just you know I want to give a special shout out to Crypto Root rest in peace a polite robbed that man for about 80, 80 grand. I feel like people owe, are owed the explanation of why the crypto course isn't happening. And the real reason is, is because polite owes me over 100 grand. He owes me a lot of money. And he hasn't pay, barely paid me anything. And he, the money I gave him was from my father's life insurance. I was sleeping on the beach and my father died from a heart attack and I didn't know I was getting money. I got some life insurance money and um, I had, you know, I was just going to travel and do my thing, but I was following Brother Polite for years and I considered him my master teacher. I really, really trusted this dude with all my heart. And, uh, and once he passed, and I remember we uh, called up, somebody called on the show when Flight was over there not too long after he robbed that man and tried to clean any history of him. It still was one video 
that he had on I and my brother Polite page mm-hmm. with him and Crypto, Crypto Roots standing there outside of those rented cars in Cali. And somebody asked him, like, politely, why, you know, you, you ever heard of Crypto Roots? Why you do that to Crypto Roots? Polite played dumb and said, I don't know who you're talking about. Then Sonetta came in and, oh, we ain't for the talk about Yes. That's so did he, did he scam, did he scam uh, Crypto Roots? I don't even know who, who is that. Who is that, brother? We ain't calling nobody names out on this platform. We ain't calling nobody names, brother. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, it was a video. Crypto Roots. He said, "Uh, polite scam." I just uh, said, brother, we ain't calling no names, brother. That's what you came in to do. I don't even know what that is. Yes, you know what that is, man. Stop lying, man. You a scammer, man. All right, brother. No, All right. Yeah, gangster. gangster. All right, brother. All right, gangster. Yeah, yeah, word. So we out here about to talk to you about cryptocurrency, insurance, and so forth and so on. And I'm one of my mentees. What happened, baby? Are we now doing our video? We're doing several. We just got off of Facebook. Now we doing YouTube. I ain't have my YouTube woman here, so I had to level up. It'd have been a beautiful thing for you to have been here, so you could do this YouTube, so then I can get on Instagram. Thank you I told you what I was doing. I told you I was. We was over by the Grove section first, um, doing our thing by where ballet is before everything opened up. Put peace to the family. Hold, hold this real quick. Deal with them about crypto real quick. I'm coming right now. Yo, Aloha. Crypto Roots on YouTube. Follow me, Crypto Roots on YouTube. He, he did this stuff on multiple occasions before he came out and called him Baby Dr. York. And we, from, from all of this information, for those who've been watching this and participating in the battles and, and putting out this information and exposing him, is Saw been doing this. Saw is a, his platform protects of the same way to Zaria. We didn't know this stuff. I didn't know this to um, um, uh, Shaka had put this out about um, Tazar, Captain Tazaria, who's a, uh, one of his top, Paul Sonnet was one of his top uh, Hebrew Israelite speakers and debaters. Uh-huh. He got a cousin that he is still supporting in jail that got convicted of molesting. Polite, if let's say Polite is innocent, he could be a partial victim you know maybe he broke up with the girl who knows you know what happened in that instance but the only true victim is that girl so i think that's yeah, what we need. and i think that's being a hypocrite because you have a member of isupk who was locked up for child molestation for rape or whatever it is and y'all still support him here it is polite have not been found guilty and y'all wouldn't support him See, see the double standard? What you have a member in ISUBK, which y'all support him financially. You put money on his books. But Polite have not been found guilty. And y'all this already This is how I know you take taking a strong... A double standard this is how brother. I know you take a strong position of Polite's innocence, regardless of waiting until the verdict comes, because you keep bringing up the same exact thing. Even though I've explained the position dozens of times, how many times do I have to explain the same exact position? So in that instance, the brother took a lot of... Even if you explain why, why it, it still, it still remains the same, though, Captain. No, you but what, 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 remain, what remains the same? Guilty. But what remains the same, though? That he was found guilty. Definitely was found guilty. But he also... Polite was a, not found guilty. I'm not saying don't support him, though. Right. Brother, you said if the brother I, come on my channel, you done. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. And you know you got me, man. You got me. I said, all right, brother. That's right. right. But right. what, 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 what does, what does, what is that part? That part is talking about until the trial is over. I just say after the trial is over. If he's found innocent, don't deal with him. That's not what I said. Right. Right. Okay. So again, the two don't match. What you're trying to match up just don't match. So I ran down, okay. I ran down that whole brother's trial already. His uh why did he was how he was found guilty. I ran all of that down already. So that scenario is not the same. Right. Okay. All right, brother. And Sarnetta brought that out in a way he was like, Well, how can you get mad at me talk? Because he told Sarnetta that I'm not gonna come back on your show if you have polite over there. Then Sarnetta, see he holds all these little secrets and then he'll drop it and make the other person be kind of exposed. He said, okay, well, how can you say that about me when one of your members who was a cousin got convicted of 
you know, molestation and you still support and give him money. So it's things like that that Sarnetta knows. Yeah, it's, it, it, it seems like a lot of a lot of covering each other because they know too much dirt on each right. other. You can't you can't call somebody else out when you know you got dirt on you. So they just kind of it sounds like they're just covering each other up. Do you have a homie that's in prison right now for child molestation that you support financially? Yes. I am against child molestation and those that molest children. So why are you supporting this person, but you are, you speak ill against others that have a love for people that have been just accused of child molestation? Okay, I answer your question very easily. When I was at both cases or both trials, the evidence that they had, um, they gave the brother a lie detector test, which he passed. They tested the sister for the young girl, rather, whether her hymen was broke because he was accused of molesting her. Her hymen was not broke. A hymen, for those that don't know, a hymen is something that they use to test to see if the woman's uh, or the child's virginity has been broken or anything like that. There was information that she said that she gave, which she then retracted. Um, so the first case that they did was thrown out. The second case, um, they did not want to um, answer to. Excuse me, the jury uh, was hung on it and the judge did not want to release them until um, they came up with an answer and then they came up with a guilty verdict. So from observing the case, if he was guilty of the crime, I would in no way support the brother. But from the evidence of the case, from the testimonies of him, as well as the individuals involved, he was not guilty, even though he was found guilty. Wow, so he was not guilty, even though he was found guilty, but you speak ill against someone else that is not guilty, but they say he was guilty. So like, I have a question. Like, this brother uh, that you support, uh -huh. does he have children? Yes. And if so, do you ever say to those children, you have a father that's a child molester? No, I don't. Well, why do you do that to others that have a love for Dr. Malachi D. York ill uh -huh. and talk his children uh -huh. of him with a quote unquote so called child molester? Right, and even Sarnetta got exposed on him and Polite, and his daughter was sitting on his lap. They were having a live, and Sarnetta was was ba was basically uh, watching uh, porno, and it was two fat black women with no with no uh, with a top showing, and he was I guess trying to share a screen, and it popped up, and everybody seen it, and a Jamaican guy got so upset and was cussing them out. And they was like, yo, kick him off. Why is he doing this? And he was like, yo, that's your sister's brother. I mean, he was deflecting. So Sarnetta has clips out here that that exposes his uh, attraction to things that a person who claims to be a pillar of the community have done over and over and over again. And he knew about uh, the Renette test, the one that uh, Polite was messing with that he claimed was his daughter. <laughs> okay, two for two. <laughs> Let's go, Renente Atum Ray, my beautiful daughter who has taught class, did her own lecture, came out with a book. Woo! Love her. What's up? Talk to me, baby. His daughter, um, all the way back to when they first got a house out there in the Pinocchio, and I think was that uh. What is that that P word? They was renting them houses and timeshares. Oh, I, have I forgot. No. It's up there in New York, but do we say it again? Yeah, I am. I, listen, you've gone so far deep into the story where I, I'm not even close to. I have, I have no frame of reference of, of what you're talking about. So listen, where, where yeah, can people you, go like saying, to get more you, to go deep into this story? Because I I don't even know where you're at at this point. This 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 is going yeah, way over my head. Yeah, when he first when he first started touching a little bit of money. It's a video out there. I don't think I, maybe Triple C and and, and Shaka probably got it. Where he had all of his wives, but the one that he was messing with that was young, which is around the same age, because she was on the Jesse Lee Peterson show with Polite and Amonet. The How many wives do you have? I have four. You have four wives, and um, so you are a polygamist. Yeah. Define that for me. A construct in which 
there's a male and several female counterparts engaged in a relationship. How many females are allowed to be involved? It's indefinite, but of course, uh, I get the consent from the females. So you say, you wake up one more, you know what, honey, I think I want another one? Uh, oh, no. That wouldn't work. So, <laughs> <laughs> how do you get the consent? Where, how, how does that happen? Well, there has to be a necessity for another female to be part because we have a, it's economically structured. So when we want to embark upon a new endeavor that can make all of us the benefactors, that would be the thing that would commence the operation. Give me an example of a situation that requires okay. number two wife. Well, this is the first wife that got involved with this relationship. I've been with Aminette for 19 years. We've been together since 12, 13 years old. That's amazing. And so, Since you've been 12? Yes. Wow. <laughs> as, as we grow and we develop, we be, began to understand more about economics and we wasn't really left with any inherited wealth. And considering that wealth really begins at $150,000 a year and the threshold for poverty for a family of four is about $32,000 a year and for individuals about $15,000 a year, neither her and I combined would get us anywhere near the point of being able to amass real wealth. And so we use the polygynous construct as a catalyst to embark upon those type of endeavors. So we opened up a bookstore and we needed assistance. And so when I presented the idea to Riot, whom we knew for a period of time because she used to come to the bookstore, uh, we then found out where we can establish some kind of reciprocity or something that could be mutually beneficial for her and for us. Were you surprised when you, here you are in the bookstore and the owner walks over to you and says, hey, I'm looking for a second wife, what do you think? <laughs> Were you surprised? That's exactly how it happened, but yes, yes I was. So it's what, not something that you're exposed to. Right, that's right. Initially, like we don't learn this in school. Right. And so what was your first impression, your first thought when the you first, it? The first thought I actually had was, I was just like, um, does she know? Right. <laughs> that was my first, was my first thought. It was right. natural because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young. So I actually was. How old were you at the time? Um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. And so I seen them two together and I was just like really happy for them. She was um, pregnant and she looked gorgeous. Like she just was this dark African looking queen right. with her afro, you know, and I was just like, wow, you know, so that was the first thought I had. I was just like, does she know, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much the first thought. And then so he says, yes, yeah, she knows. And you say, okay, let's talk, the three of you, or did you just bring her home? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what we did, we all talked. I, of course, got permission from my wife, Aminette, to engage her and present the idea to her. And then we all eventually talked after I spoke to her and we had a meeting. Are you guys like legally married or you just say wife? Oh, oh of course bigamy is against the law, mm -hmm. but I have contracts with each of my wives. With the wife, okay. Were you surprised when your wife said yes to a second wife? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. What I would say is I would be surprised some years prior. Right. Because that definitely wouldn't have been her disposition. So you, you meet her and then what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So uh, it's not like, you know, a random person off the street. Like I've actually seen her, I've seen her family. Right. You know, we're pretty much on the same path. So I said, this would be a good sister. How was uh, Brother Polite able to convince you to do this? <laughs> wow, good choice of words. <laughs> well, like for me, I thought more of the future. And as they mentioned, I was conceiving at the time. So I know I didn't have both parents. There are things that I was, uh, I was lacking right. growing up. You, and I wanted more. No, oh, okay. I wanted more for my child. Right. So I said, you know what? I can see how I can benefit because I also wanted to educate my child. So I was able to um, homeschool. So my child was able to see both parents and right. she was able to grow into uh, inherited wealth 
because we already erected our own businesses. So I said, you know, it's different, but I'm willing to give it a try. And he showed me results. Like I've seen results and she was very positive. Right? It was very positive. It was on the same path, like mentally as well. Oh, okay. And we all wanted more for each other. Right. So I said, okay. That's amazing. Second first wife. Cause she wasn't his first. But I'm just saying that those who know know what second I mean when I say I'm I'm, I'm Renata's the second first wife. But the girl was young and she telling the story how she was like 15 or 16 when Polite was looking at her. She would come to the bookstore, his bookstore. He he claimed he had at the time, and they basically I'm um, Renata them recruited her. But when you watch, that's on the Jesse Lee Peterson show years later after the Vlad and all of them TV shows, but the video you I'm talking about, she was his. He was calling her his daughter in the uh, the in the video, and the way he talked and said it, it was sexual then. So I assume Ray, my beautiful daughter, who has taught class, did her own lecture, came out with a book. Woo! Love her. What's up? Talk to me, baby. Love her. What's up? Talk to me, baby. And, and Sarnetta, we got the clips of him. Uh, talking that he knew about that when when him and Polite fell out and he, when Polite took ten thousand dollars he started call, that's when he called him Baby Dr. Yoke and he was talking about this girl here. The Tina Barnes is her real name. He just gonna I'm gonna give you a donation. So I said cool. I ain't give a fuck, nigga. Give me my money, nigga. I said all right. Polite gonna give me a donation, y'all. So I rolled with it. I rolled with that shit. Polite gonna give me a donation. I said all right, cool. As long as you give me. My money, you can call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Cause the minute you give me my money and I put that shit in my pocket, nah nigga, you scared me, nigga. You scared me. But way more than that. What I told you, polite, was just give me ten thousand. That's what I told you. That's what I was saying to you. I said, just give me ten thousand back. I don't even care. This is why you didn't even want to show the goddamn books. You didn't show me the books, you didn't show me the receipt. Every time I asked you to let me see the book, you said I left my computer home. But nigga, I want to go home with you. Oh, I'm going, me and I'm in there going out. We going out, I'll get back to you. But like, don't make me do it, bro. I'm trying to hold back. And you know what I'm talking about. All right? But like, you's a lying bitch. That's all I got to say about you. I told the people, you can talk good. You, you good with the talking. You can scam the panties off of a faggot, nigga. You can scam the panties off of a faggot, but I know you. Don't forget that. You said I was disloyal to you and dishonest to you? Nigga, you came on my platform scamming everybody, ripping off everybody, and you ain't give a fuck about me, but I'm disloyal to you? <laughs> Family, do y'all hear that shit? And then you go on to say, Sarnetta, you talked about my kids. You talked about my children. Another lie, y'all. That is another damn lie. That's all that boy got is lies. I never talked about my aunt. Get one video, I would never talk about my aunt. Why, would, why in the hell would I talk about little my aunt? Huh? I would never, in, a wild, in my wildest dreams, Talk about little my aunt. You sound stupid, nigga. You're trying to get the people to try to go with you and say, oh, Sarnetta, you wrong. You wrong for that. Show me where I talked about my aunt at, Polite. Lying motherfucker. You's a lying bitch, Polite. I know you's a bitch today when, when Tazariak said, cross the line. I looked you right in your eyes, nigga. Right in your eyes. You didn't want none of that. Then Tazariak told the other girl, Keep your mouth shut right in front of you, nigga. You ain't say a damn thing, nigga. So shut your baby. Shut your bitch ass up. Trying to scare somebody. Now you want to threaten me, nigga. I'm not scared of you, nigga. Do what the fuck you got to do. Speak your speech, nigga. But you ain't scaring nobody over here. Evidently, you should have known Sarnetta's a crazy motherfucker that he going to come back at me. See, what it is is you think I'm by myself and you can just roll up and do what the fuck you want to me. That's what you thinking. Try it. Try it. I will bust your motherfucking head wide open to the white meat, nigga. What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Trying to send subliminal shots at me like I'm supposed to crawl and run under the damn bed somewhere. 
fuck out of here. So you go on to say that Sarnetta talked about your kids. Who are you talking about? Huh? You ain't talking about Tasia, right? You ain't talking about that her, right? You ain't talking about Tasia Barnes, right? I know you ain't talking about her. I knew her before you polite. You ain't talking about her, right? The um, the one you call Renente, you ain't calling her your daughter, are you? Don't do it. Don't make me fucking do it, nigga. Huh? Little Dr. York, don't make me do it, nigga. Little fucking Dr. York. You ain't talking about her, right? The one that you call Renente. Huh? Nigga, that ain't your daughter, nigga. Cut it out. Don't make me bring her sister right here in front of me. Her sister is my wife cousin, nigga. You know that. Play yourself. You know that. Play your motherfucking self. Huh? She ran away from home to be with your bitch ass. She left her own mother to be with your bitch ass. Nigga, what you talking about? Why you think her mother and them can't even find her? You wanna you wanna play with me, nigga? I told you it'd be better for you to fuck with Cab Gills and, and bang back at Pharaoh, nigga. Leave me the fuck alone. You can talk whatever the talk you wanna talk about me, but I ain't never do no foul shit like you, nigga. Never rob nobody, bitch. Fuck is you talking about? Huh? I know you ain't talking about that girl, huh? The one that ran away from home? Who snuck out the room? And left her mother because her mother left you. You want me to tell the people why she left you, bitch? I'll tell them when you cut back. I'll tell them when you come back at me. I ain't gonna give up everything. Told you it'd be better to leave me the fuck alone. You're fucking with the wrong one, and you know I'm crazy enough to go the fuck in. I'm not scared of getting beat the fuck down. I'm gonna still go in, nigga. You better kill me, bitch. You better fucking kill me. Fuck is wrong with you? Ain't nobody scared of you, nigga. Ain't nobody in this world is more grimier, low life, scumbag as you. You done robbed from little babies, motherfucker. You done robbed from, from women and children, nigga. Fuck is wrong with you trying to come back at me, knowing that I got all this shit on you. You get up in here and tell all these fucking lies and then you try to threaten me like I'm scared of you, bitch. Fuck out of here. Everybody know where you live. Yeah, so what? Come get it. Come get it, nigga. I'm a crazy motherfucker. Don't give a fuck. Remember, the dude was downstairs in your hallway with a ski mask on. Nigga, say the name. Say who was down there. Say who was that. He's talking about blue pill, y'all. He's talking about blue pill. Blue pill. And when the bitch ass nigga called me, I ain't give a fuck. I said, so what, nigga? I, I went right downstairs. Guess who was here with me to back it up? Sankofa was right here with me. And Sankofa and me went right downstairs, nigga. Sankofa came back like this. Yo, ain't nobody down there. Trying to make it look like uh, Blue Pill was coming over here to do something damage to me. Sounds stupid. You sound stupid. He looks. I never exposed this years ago. So this thing goes deep. So I never been knew about this. King Simon, all of these cats who was around Red Pill, Blue Pill, Garfield, all of the, the so-called House of Confidence all-stars who was already preparing the way for the scam god anti-messiah for light. This, they all guilty because if it came down to just, they was around it to put hands and feet, if 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 even that much. Okay, if you ain't gonna call the cops and all that, it should have been some hands and feet because of what took place, but none of them said nothing. And, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh -huh. All of the elders said nothing. All the, the Phil Valentines, Queen of Fool, um, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, you got all these old cats, Bobby Hemet, they was all around. And these are the so-called uh, grandfathers of the conscious community. They said nothing when Polite was doing this. They said nothing, and they saying nothing now. 
so that's this is why we have to continue doing the job that we're doing and you doing what you're doing i've been doing this for years triple c shaka all has been out here in these pockets of youtube it's just that it's hard for people like you say they don't do no research it's like this and again not to disrespect the, the, the present day victim's mother but they being in these spaces where they they attracted to these guys and they're not doing no no due diligence and research and 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 the sad part about it and it's it's, it's no excuse i'm not saying that but the woman uh that uh whose child that got molested you know she was with polite when zion lex them and polite was debating and arguing about rape in the bible and and and, and he and polite was justifying it he that zion lex created it i booked king of diamonds for free you know what i saw that night in king of diamonds the strip club i saw dudes walk through with sparklers and women getting fucked shortly thereafter if you could get fucked because the guy bought some bottles something is mathematically wrong especially if in your wisdom you know you come from a culture where a woman is deified if in your wisdom you come from a culture that women are considered gods but all it takes is a man pulling out no disrespect to brother polite ten thousand in his pocket thirty thousand in his right pocket and because he pulled out a total of forty thousand you should give him something sacred that none of that motherfucking money could buy what sense does that make and i'm handing my Since i'm asking for clarity <clears throat> so the answer to the question where we didn't know if we was in big mama's house or big papa's house or if they're still together the answer to if this was a law that you had to talk to parents first otherwise it's considered rape we're in a conundrum now because the answer to that question deferred our attention to another scenario and now for the new scenario that he brought up to answer that question i have the same question now does that new scenario have any supporting verses that say hey uh, if you don't meet the parents it's considered rape because now there's two scenarios i have the same question and i still want to know for the first scenario why are we using this other scenario as if it's corroborating testimony for the first one i don't see the connection whatsoever uh, are we using the same words in hebrew that we're using the first passage that are using the next one are we looking at humble and then humble is the same word that we're using for strength or like i just want to know i just want to know when the question for the first scenario was is is it a matter of being in mommy daddy's house and someone's having sex in the house is it a, a matter of hey you know if you didn't meet the mother and father it's considered rape for you to have sex and the implication is on the man and the woman is implicit i don't know where any of that information comes from other than the subjective aspect of brother zion's conceptual undertakings right you understand and this is before this happened so it's like these women too need to really look at that you got kids and stuff like that and y'all but they they don't they not spiritually aware either so it, a lot of it goes back to not having uh awareness and being and chasing a bag and trying to be whatever you end up creating these situations for your children again before i get out the other guy shaka Amo, one of sarnetta's biggest uh debaters and kimmit and all that he he molested a 14 year old girl and she came out a couple years later and kind of started out him just wanting me wanting my attention and you know to now um i was actually okay with keeping my door open to my bedroom after school so when i came when i when i was doing that um he would just kind of stand at the crack of the door at a very awkward crack of the door right, right by the hinges kind of crack where you can still you can still see in my room um my best my friends and I would hang out we would have three way and four way and stuff like that just be a group of us kids on the phone talking about stuff laughing kiki chopping it up and all that stuff that we're just having fun Chaco would be kind of eavesdropping um kind of um I, I would look back I'd see his the, the outline of his shadow it's kind of like 
six two six three kind of just a shadow like just kind of and i would just be like just kind of looking back like oh okay weird maybe he just was hearing me cuss they just like you know maybe he's feeling parental or like i was like shrugs whatever i'm I mean, he ain't my daddy so i'm just still gonna chop it up with my friends and, you know but he would just come around and do it again and again and now he's just kind of um feeling on himself um as I'm just kind of laying in bed, you know, talking to my friends on the phone. I fuck other mother daughters. You don't see them saying no shit like this all over the internet. I'm laughing and having, you know, but he would just be kind of groping himself, kind of as if he I was wasn't laughing. I didn't turning think on, was turning, turned on or something. Um, at this time, still, I'm 14. You hear how old she is? At this time, she's still 14 years old. All right, I told you months, last couple of months ago, a woman came on my channel and told me about a, um, a woman that her, was a friend of hers and he was caught or had charges against him. And I've been speaking about that on my channel. It's getting too heavy for me. Yeah. Where, where, Boy, so yeah, where, where can we go to get I'm more of this info? Is it Chuck, Chuck Morgan's page, what, what, what channel can yeah. we go to? Yeah, you can go to uh, Chuck Morgan. He could just type in Chuck Morgan. Uh, YouTube, Triple C can hook you with that. And also, Chuck got a website called Nawapianism.com. N U W A U P I um, A N I S M.com. He got all of the documents of York going to jail and what him messing with a, a 14 year old girl, Habiba, and her, all this stuff is up there. Polite knows this stuff. He was deep into it and he copied and followed the same spirit that York did. So yeah, this I know it's deeper than what we was talking about, but now, trust I, me, if your listeners ain't never heard of this, all they gotta do is follow, follow the information. Just type in Brother Polite Exposed. You are gonna see all types of trust and trolls of this stuff. All right, so, my brother, thank you say, so much. Thank you so much for calling in. That was, listen, that was heavy. <laughs> that, that, that was heavy. That was more than what I expected. There's a, I, there's a lot of information out there. People, please, protect yourself financially, protect yourself physically, do research before you put yourself in a compromising position. All right, we get through all these calls, but they, they can't be super long. Here we go. We